Hello, and welcome to this second episode in my Space Marine painting series. Today we're going to be tackling the White Scars chapter, and this gives us a good opportunity to paint what a lot of people consider to be a very challenging color, and that is white. They're predominantly white armor with a lot of accents around that help the color to stand out. My hope is for a fast, grim dark sort of paint scheme where we don't have to either douse the model in white or spend an inordinate amount of time layering on thin coat after thin coat. Then again, this is White Scars. Isn't everything about speed? We're gonna start things off with a matte black primer. And you can see we've got our white scar kitted out here, the shoulder pads and the little Kirby sword, as well as any basic texture for the base. From here, we come to our first white paint and it is a white acrylic ink from above. We're using this as both a zenithal and to help establish our base color. So we can go a little bit heavier on it than we would normally for a zenithal. We'll pay special attention to areas like the shoulder pads, the top of the backpack, and the helmet to help add a little bit extra emphasis on there. And now that Xenothal is done. If we did it correctly, it should be a lot of white from the top and black from underneath. Next, we're gonna move to Pro Acryl Transparent White. And this is basically a white contrast paint that's a little bit more dense. However, when used through the airbrush, it goes on really nice and smooth and lets us actually build up a really nice coat with a lot of control. This ensures that we don't directly overwhelm any of the shading that we worked really hard to build up in the first place. We're just going to drop the angle a little bit from where we would normally do a zenithal and make sure to hit every single one of those plates. We don't have to worry about being too incredibly precise, we're just trying to smooth out what the ink did earlier. If you're going to try and do this effect via a standard brush, just make sure to work from the bottom to the top of each panel. That way it creates the nice gradient and doesn't mess with our shading too much. The last place your brush touches is going to be the part with the most paint deposited. And now we're going to pick out all of the details that we would like to be red. This includes the trim on the shoulder pads, the chest aquila, the face mask, and any random panels that we want to just give a little bit pop of color to. Try to work in the direction of whatever detail you're painting. And don't worry if you go a little bit outside the lines. Some of the shading we're going to do later will cover that up. But if you end up going really far outside what you're wanting to paint, a little dab of the transparent white will fix that right up. Now 
Again, turn the mini with the details. You have a lot of freedom of movement with the mini and not just your brush. The second main accent color is gold, and we're going to use this to pick out any white scars, lightning bolt logos, as well as the brass grips of swords, or any plates that we want to add that additional color to. A big part of the white scars theme in general is being able to shuffle this gold and the red around on various parts of the mini to lend a sense of individuality. This is especially true if you're painting stuff up for the Horus Heresy, as it was common to see even partial plate markings instead of the full colors like I'm doing here. Now we're going to take care of anywhere we want to be bare metal on the mini, such as the bolt gun, the teeth of the chain sword, any chains or vents. Next, it's on to transparent black for all of the weapon casings, such as the chainsword and the bolt gun, as well as any of the flexible materials, such as the belt or the joints between the armor. Try not to overload your brush and just let it flow onto the details. As with the red and gold though, a little bit of overspill is fine. For any tassels or plumes, we're gonna switch to Black Templar because it has a little bit more blue in it and feels slightly more organic than the flatter transparent black we were using. Now is a good time to go back and check for any details you might have missed or any touch-ups you want to do for the main colors. To add a bit of dirt and grime, we're going to use a dark brown enamel wash. Usually this will be labeled for green vehicles. And while our white scar is neither green nor a vehicle, I think his aspirations of speed are close enough to count. After giving the enamel about an hour or two to dry, we're going to come back in with some white spirits and either a makeup sponge or a Q-tip. Using this to apply gentle pressure, we're going to remove some of that set enamel from most of the major surfaces, being careful not to press too hard and damage the paint beneath or to remove too much of the grime we've made from the recesses. Try to resist the urge to add pressure in order to remove more of the enamel. Just take your time with short, gentle passes until you've got that white or any of the other colors back where you want them to be.
now is a good time to get started on our basing. And we're just going to base coat the whole base, including any rocks or anything on there, with Xandri dust. While we wait for the base to dry, we're going to get started on the glow effects using white to pick out any light sources, such as the eye lenses or the arm panel. This can go right on, and if you overspill a little bit, you can just wipe that right up with a finger or a damp brush. It's now you really get to see how different our final armor finish is from pure white. The white should dry fairly quickly, and we're just going to go back over it with our fluorescent orange or fluorescent red. You don't have to be all that neat here, so this is kind of what's going to give us that glow effect. But just try not to glob it on. After that, with an even smaller dot of white, we're going to pick out where we want the lights to shine the brightest. For most surfaces, this will be roughly in the center. However, for eyes, you can actually use it to make some glowing pupils. Then we're just going to take a little bit of red ink and dab over the entire area that we want to glow. This will give the glow its final color. Back to the base, we're just going to give the whole thing a quick dark brown wash. Then it's a quick dry brush with Vallejo Pale Sand. This next step isn't all that critical to the overall color of the base, but will do well to give us that sort of dusty, dirty look, especially around the greaves. We're just going to take some pigment powders and really work and mash them around on the base until they reach the finish that we want. Just be sure to use a soft, dry brush for this, otherwise the pigments will actually turn right into paint. You also don't need a whole lot, and as you can see, I probably have way too much on my brush. Just keep working the powders around until you've gotten rid of most of the major clumps, and be sure to hit those boots. To fix the pigments in place a little bit, I'm using a 50-50 mix of matte varnish and acrylic medium. This is through the airbrush from a fair distance away. I don't want to wet it down too much. And with that, all that's left is to finish up the base rim and throw on a coat of, in my case, matte varnish. I'm pretty satisfied with the effect that I've achieved, but let me know what you think down there in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to click that like button and let me know. If you missed the first video in the series, you can click up here someplace and go check that out. But if you want to catch the rest of them or any other videos that I make, go ahead and click that subscribe button so that you don't miss a video. But as always, thank you for watching and happy painting.